So, hello, Los Angeles Film School. Hello, Los Angeles Recording School. How, hello to all the people online that are watching us, all the people that are watching the stream. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's been a very, very special day for the uh, LA Recording School, LA Rec uh, Film School. It's been a very, it's going to be a very great week and it's a very great year because we're celebrating our 20th year anniversary and uh, this is one of, uh, one of the events that I've really been looking forward to. My name is Joe Byron. I have the distinct pleasure and honor of having taught the very first class at the Los Angeles Film School back in September of 1999. And it's something that I'm really proud of. Uh, and uh, the 20 years that I've spent here at the school has been very, very special to me. And it's been special to me because of all the students that I've met. You know, creative people are very special. They're crazy as hell. <laughs> but, you know, they, 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 they beat to a different drummer, they operate on a different wavelength, and it's so, so great to meet people that have the vision, that have the work ethic, that have the creativity of the people that I've met over the years here, and there have been a lot of them. Um, we, uh, today, uh, did a couple of presentations of our IAA certifications gold and platinum here that's really, really impressive. Uh, everyone up here has uh, gold or platinum records which they've either produced or engineered. And many up here also have won Grammys or worked with uh, Grammy nominees or Grammy winners as well. So it's really impressive and I'm really proud to have them. And another interesting thing about our panel here is the fact that it's all international. We have panelists from Brazil, we have a panelist from Canada, from Israel, and from Colombia. <laughs> how, how great is that, okay? We don't have any women here, but next year we want the women to come out, okay? Um, so let me introduce the panel. Uh, to my immediate left here is Enrique And Andrade. Andrande? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, he is a. Uh, uh, a recording engineer, producer, he worked with Zane, Juanes, uh, Justin Bieber, and many, many more. Uh, immediately to his left is Nick Hernandez, not to be confused with this. Enriquez. Enriquez, not it's to okay. be confused with this Enriquez. Uh, and uh, he, uh, uh, Nick is from our music production program. And as to my knowledge, he is the first music production student, which is a relatively new program for us, to get a certification. And also, since he graduated only two years ago, he's gotten that certification faster than anyone in my memory uh, can, can remember. My memory is not great, but two years to get a, a gold record is pretty amazing. Okay? Uh, to his left is Daniel Zeidenstadt. Uh, Daniel graduated around 2009. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, he's an engineer. He specializes in voice engineering. He's worked with amazing people. Fifth Harmony, Iggy Azalea, Ruth Ora, Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga. He's got over 30 certifications. I don't know the exact number. Me neither. He doesn't either. <laughs> and uh, immediately to his right, I mean his left, is uh, Andreas Borda Zavala. Andreas has five Grammy wins, right? Yes. Five Grammy wins, four Latin Grammys, and one American Grammy. And one of those Grammys, by the way, was for Best Engineered Album. He worked with Vivas. Uh, and he is also one of our Spotlight inductees, so we're going we're gonna to spend some more time with him later on in the week. Thank, thank you, Joe. So what I'd like to do is start, because I kind of just highlighted, you know, I did a little bit of name dropping. I want to kind of go down the list. We'll start with uh, Enrique. And uh, tell us, when you first went to school here, what you studied, uh, maybe elaborate a little more on some of the credits you have, and, uh, and some of the work that you've done, okay? Cool. Uh, I came to school uh, in 2010. I did the certification uh, of the recording uh, program. It's... Uh, I think it's a program that the school doesn't have anymore, but it was a, 
uh, uh, hands-on pretty much program back in the day. Then from there, I got a job from the school, like the school connected me to Record Plant, uh, which is one of the best studios in the world still. And I got the chance to start as a runner and then became an assistant and then got to start in this whole journey. Like got came across a lot of amazing people. Got to assist Daniel and I got to assist on, you too. Man. Yeah, there was some fun stuff and uh, got. I think my first session was John Bon Jovi and Avicii. That was my first engineering session at Record Plant, and. <laughs> From there, it's really crazy, like really forget the amount of people that we get to work with. It becomes normal, it, kind of like, but yeah, we have the, I have the chance to work with a bunch of like amazing artists and in amazing projects. One of them, one is also got Grammys and uh, number one songs like uh, with Bieber that was then and then it's insane to be a part of number one, two, three of the top 100 billboard here and there. And I think that's, that's kind of it. That's a lot of it. That's a lot of it, yeah. Nick, talk about your quick journey. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I started school here in 2015 in the music production program and I felt like I got here the first day and it was kind of over in the blink of an eye and I didn't take it in as much as I should have. Um, but although I do only have the one certification for body, there's a lot of work that I've been uh, proud to be a part of and super happy with how I've kind of shaped my life since coming to school here and how I've learned to develop myself and learn to uh, find shortcomings in myself and improve on them because of what the school taught me. And uh, yeah. You had said you started working on body while you were still a student, right? Yeah, yeah, the song was started while I was at school here and between, you know, after classes I would go to uh, the Loud Luxury Guys house that was just up the street from here before. And we would just make songs every day. We've done countless pieces of work together. And uh, Body was just one of those songs. No one ever really thought it was going to ever leave our home studio. And now it, it did. <laughs> and it changed all of our lives for the better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Daniel, you've got a lot of stories to tell, I know. Uh, Hello. Yeah. So, um, Let's see, so I got here in 2009. I came to this school because an engineer who recorded an album I really liked, I just contacted him on MySpace. It's that long ago. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, uh, I don't know, man, he's a Japanese. So he's like, I just moved to LA and went to the recording workshop, which was then the recording school at this point. Um, and then I went to a bunch of shows, and everything was cool. And I, I ran a studio back in Israel, and I was like, you know, enough of this. So we shut down the studio in two weeks. Yeah, and then school plus being a waiter and stuff, and uh, got married and all sorts of stuff, and interned at a bunch of studios, um, but they were all terrible, and I kept feeling like uh, it's a waste of time, and this whole idea was maybe a waste of time. And then I found an internship at Capitol Studios, and that was different. And actually, I couldn't legally get the internship. So the school agreed to, because I already finished the school, <laughs> so the school was cool, and they agreed to, uh, uh, like make me like a student for another two weeks so I can get the internship capital legally. And then I did that and get capital, uh, ended up moving to Record Plant, which is also about a month before Enrique, which is why when he showed up, he was like, oh, this guy's been here forever. <laughs> but, I, but I was the new guy until he showed up. Um, yeah, and then same similar story. We were at Record Plant. I was a runner. Um, it, it was okay. You clean a lot of puke. Uh, <laughs> Not, not the best job. Um, oh, yeah. But you meet a lot of cool people, and if these people like you, they'll maybe give you jobs later. Uh, so that was cool. And then I was, still a, I was still a runner, but it was Christmas, and the whole staff was with their families and stuff, but I'm like an uh, immigrant, and 
Jewish and just don't care particularly. <laughs> so I just stayed behind. And then Will I Am showed up, and he was like, "I need a session." And they're like, "We don't have any assistants." And I was like, "Hi, I'm just the, I know I'm just the janitor. But <laughs> can I be in the room?" And and he said yes, and it turned into a six-month long session. And then I had a, that's that's kind of how I started. And my first wow. engineering gigs were with Will I Am actually, in the states at least. Well, first first one was LL Cool J. <laughs> and he was really nice. And he didn't want to, I was like, I'm making a song and it's going to be on the radio tomorrow. And then we finished it and I asked him, like, yo, so you, you're giving it, like, you know, to the radio? And he was like, no, I'm just going to listen to it. In my <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my story. <laughs> Daniel, drop us some names because you've oh. worked recently with some yeah, very um, well-known people. I thought it was just, okay, yeah, I guess that's just the beginning story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, then uh, I stayed with Record Plan for a long time, and then Esther Dean offered me a job with her, uh, being her permanent engineer, and I took it, and then I quit three days in, and then I was just kind of floating around. And then Record Plan were cool, and they started like throwing gigs my way, and that's how I met like Elton John, and, and Bruce Springsteen, and uh, Lady Gaga, and all sorts of stuff like that. And then I got picked up by Rihanna's vocal producer, Kook, because um, his engineer, Josh, was su super dope. <laughs> Uh, he switched to mixing and kind of switched to, to just being with Bieber, so like the job was open. So he took me around. And then with Cook, we did Katy Perry and Pentatonix and uh, uh, a bunch of Britney Spears stuff, a bunch of that kind of stuff. And that's how I learned like the vocal stuff. And ever since then, I'm just doing my vocal thing. Oh, yeah, and all of, yeah, never mind. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> that was some of the best name dropping I've heard in a long time. You literally <laughs> asked. <laughs> There's even more. Andreas. Perfect. Well, I was uh, in Lars. I graduated in um, 2011, I think. Yeah. Um, I, was, uh, I was coming from Mexico at the time, but I'm from Colombia. And um, I finished all the program in, in Lars. And after that, I, I applied to the OPT uh, for the international students. And I was trying to struggle, trying to find a, um, like an internship, like in Record Plan or Ocean Way and all that stuff. But it was complicated, actually. And I, was, I, w I did that like six months before finishing the program. And it was hard. And at the end, I didn't get all of that. But after doing a lot of network, I, I met people of, in the Latin American uh, industry here in LA. And one, people, uh, one person that is called Rene uh, opened the doors for me at the end of the day. And he, he told me, like, at the end of the day, uh, I cannot pay you, but I can give you the, the place of assistant right away. So I did. I, pretty much work one year without paying and just learning about everything in the studio. Uh, administrating, knowing the clients, uh, trying to understand how to run the patch, uh, microphones, all that stuff. And the OPT finished and, well, pretty much my time was, 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 uh, was finished in here in LA. So I moved to, to Mexico and I started Open Doors and Open Doors and finally I got the uh, the, the placement of assistant in Sony Music Studios in, in Mexico. And doing that, I... Um, uh, ...Mexican artist in the, in the industry. And it was just pretty much assisting, assisting, assisting until the, I was uh, injuring some of the albums, some of the singles. And after that, uh, I started to working with a lot of, with Natalia Lafourcade in Mexico. And... Pretty much three, two years later on, they, they told me that uh, she, she was uh, nominated for, for the Latin Grammys. And I thought it was going to be one or just, just one, and we pretty much won three. So it was like a big surprise. And I have to do more and more and more, but uh, in the studio it was a little bit complicated. So I, I ended up doing freelance and working in Post, uh, Disney, um, Live Sound, all that stuff in freelance. And yeah, after that, I wanted to take a change of, of country, and I moved to, to Colombia to start opening doors in, in, the, in the music industry. And it was pretty much just everything planned. I didn't, it just happened. I, I ended up in Bogota, and one month later, uh, Carlos Vives, uh, he, 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 was, he built the studio like um, one year and a half before. And when I got there, uh, they told me that they were they were looking for an engineer in the, in the studio, so I just presented the the, curricul the, the the curriculum. And three weeks after I got to to Bogota, they told me that I was hired to to be in the studio. So after that, it just been almost three years working with with Carlos, and a bunch of artists that I thought I was gonna try to like 
years to come to, to work with them. And in the first year, I got to work with all of them. So it was, uh, it was amazing. And so after that, I just, it's just pretty much history. <laughs> it just, and, and actually, last year, we, we won Latin Grammy with, with Carlos. And I was, it was a very good surprise because at the end of the day, Carlos was, uh, since I have memory, I've been listen, listening to Carlos Vives' music. So 25 years later, I can say that I can be the, his right hand in his studio. So it was, it wow. was an amazing surprise. Such inspirational stories. So, so uh, you're inspiring me right now. I want to. What I want to ask you all now is: uh, think back before you came to the LA Recording School, LA Recording Workshop. Where were you at in terms of what you wanted to do with your life? Uh, what you thought you could do with your life? What you would think you get out of the school. So kind of what was your headset when you were thinking of making a jump into this industry? Then what was it like while you were a student? And what was it like afterwards when you started when your work started to make a difference? And I'd like to start with you, Nick, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, before I came to school here, I was DJing around Ontario, Canada, and doing small mini tours for no audiences, pretty much. And uh, I really, really wanted to be a touring DJ. I really wanted to do the world DJing, different clubs and whatever, and be the be in the spotlight, be the center of attention, have my own career, all this stuff. And then I came to school here, and the main reason I came to school was, the main reason I chose here was because I was looking for somewhere in Canada and Canada offers absolutely nothing close to this. They, we have you know, very small schools in Toronto, maybe a couple hundred students, stuff like that, um, but nothing as intense as this and as helpful as this was. And while I was in school here, I realized that I loved the songwriting process more than I loved uh, sitting by myself making house music, which is what I was doing. I was making like disco house music by myself. And along the road of me being here, I did the full switch and didn't want to be an artist anymore, wanted to be completely behind the scenes, started doing sessions while I was living out here, moved back to Toronto, started doing more sessions, reaching out to more songwriters and more producers and collaborating in the back end and um, that kind of stuff. And now I've fallen in love with it. And now I, I always say I like too many different kinds of music to be my own artist. You know, I like making too many different kinds of things and trying new things and being the underdog in new genres and stuff like that, um, that I wouldn't want to be locked into one, one thing. Yeah. And uh, did you ever think, whenever you were just starting out here, that a certified single so quickly? Never in a million years. <laughs> yeah, that was... How does that feel? I don't know, my dad still calls it a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Get a real job. Yes, <laughs> my dad's very traditional European guy. Uh, no, I, I, I think it's, it's all been hard work, and I, I give a lot of credit to my brother, my manager, uh, who always kept me pushing. And you know, even when I'm like, ah, this is never gonna work. I'm never gonna be able to make it in this industry. He's the, always the one that's like, no, 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 you're gonna do it. It's gonna be okay. I got you. I'm going to get you through this. And here we are with my first certification. <laughs> Fantastic. I know, awesome. Daniel, you, yeah. give him a hand. I know, Daniel, your story is way different. Uh, I don't know. What's, sorry. <clears throat> I mean, you'd said that you came here because. Yeah, because uh, of a different student, Doshi Kasai. Can I use my mic? Hey, hey. No, there it works. Just hates my voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, this uh, this dude touched albums, and he has a plaque actually next to Enrique's for the Foo Fighters, which I thought was cool because I haven't talked to him in years. Um, so he said he came here, so I, I came here. But it's it's a different story with me a little bit because I, I I ran my own commercial facility. That it's a long story, but I obtained this commercial facility and I ran ran it for four years uh, before I came here. So I, I moved to LA to try not to be poor because. <laughs> 
Israel is a really small market, and everything you do will only achieve very little. Like, like all right, so my band in Israel is gold certified, which means we sold a thousand copies. <laughs> yeah, which means I made like a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, and then um, I actually remember the moment. I was like, every time you go to a show, you go to a studio, all the sound guys were just pissed off. And then I saw, I went to get my guitar amp fixed, and the the, the guy who fixes the amps, he had like a whole stack of mix magazines, and all the engineers were just happy. They're just like laying on mixers, big mixers with AC rooms, and just looking happy. And I was like, I want that. So, so I just shut down everything and, and moved to the States. And uh, uh, honestly, I came to school for, for a visa so I can be here. Um, a lot. A lot. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was, it was mostly just like I, I really just wanted to be here and, and to try to do this. And um, I didn't think I'll ever end up in pop. That was a, a mistake or an accident, I guess. It happened by accident. Because I just figured like once you get kind of like cool credits and stuff, you can do whatever you want. But then it, you kind of get like in a, in a lane, in, in LA, especially in LA. Um, and I, I actually really... At all. Yes, you find the art in everything. And like you said, I like all, all the genres. Yeah. And I still do weird, weird stuff on the side for free for, for weird bands. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Fantastic. Andreas. Uh, well, um, I think three years before high school, I started like, uh, I, I started like at 12 or 13, uh, learning a lot of guitar and, and I was very inspired about that, and after that, I started to to like realize how how can I sound better. Like I didn't know how to do it, so I started like investigating about how to record with a laptop or with an adapter or something. And after two years before high school, I just uh, very decided that I would do. Record pretty much the music of the movies. So I very well, I was very decided for that, and Lars was like the the main the main opportunity for me that I was here in LA, actually the the, the capital of the music industry and all of that, the movies. So I thought, okay, I wanted a, a big university that could uh, that could uh, give me the opportunity of of working with analog uh, analog uh, with tape, with good microphones, with a lot of stuff, um, working with post production, all that stuff. I liked that, so. Uh, for me, it was very, very clear that I wanted to do that, but along the way, everything changes a little bit. So, um, yeah, like I, I didn't expect that everything was going to happen when I got here. I just wanted to take advantage of of time because being an international student, you have very short time, and you're competing against a lot of people. So, deciding that just I wanted to take a, a crash just of everything very fast and try to get an opportunity in the industry. And I did, but at the end of the day, I thought I was going to be here in LA for a long time, but it was not like that. And sometimes you expect that, sometimes the thing that you want most, uh, it's going to happen at the end of the day, it's not going to happen, but it's going to be better. So I, but got, I got back to Mexico and everything just pretty much has started. So, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit weird how everything happened, but it, it, it was a very good, good choice to do. Great, great story. Uh, Enrique, your turn. Uh, to me, it was, I had a studio in Brazil as well, like a commercial studio, and uh, like Daniel said, uh, Brazil has a huge market, I think bigger than Israel, but my city was kind of small, so I kind of reached the ceiling very quickly anymore. I wanted to, I, I didn't finish, uh, College, so it's like still like thinking about this, like dad's, my parents' pressure of like you're not gonna do anything with your life. So I got this opportunity to, you know, something that I love. It started with uh, and he straight up told me like. Your preamps are bad. Your microphone is terrible, and you don't know how to record. And I was like, "Yeah, he's right." So I was like, "Okay, go. I can. I need to learn this." So it was like a combination of getting like a, a few like personal dreams, like uh, finishing college, pursuing education, and 
working with music, um, living outside Brazil, like you. The original plan was to go to London, but I decide uh, about LA because like how big the market it is here and the weather. I don't think as a Brazilian I would survive that glooming weather. And then when I came to school, it was definitely a challenge because I came, I paid school with my money. As an international student, we don't get loans. We can't apply for a bunch of the fi financial aid stuff. So I paid school with the money I did engineering. So going back to become a student and calling my parents for money and like begging for like internships and jobs on places that I kind of felt that I already like I was like above that or beyond that like what they could offer was kind of like it's a challenge and then money and then people and then no infrastructure and all that stuff was definitely a crazy crazy challenge as a as a international student for sure and then you get to this point where the visa expires and then you have an OPT which is a chance of working for a year and then you only have one year to shine and make everything happen. And it's like, I. We all are ambitious people and we dream big. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. But I, I, I couldn't imagine that would be the results would be this, this amazing. So. Wow. Great. Love it. Um, so, yeah, give them a hand, absolutely. Um, I feel that to be a, an artist, you need to have a vision and you need to have passion. I'm here, it needs to be the thing that drives you. Uh, and then you need to know what you're doing. Because as has already been mentioned, the competition is so fierce that you have to be really good in terms of the technology. But the other thing that you need has to do with working with other people. And that requires networking, networking and networking. But it also requires a work ethic and a, the way that you present yourself to the profession. So Daniel, I'd like to start with you. Um, what, uh, what can you tell these students what they need to know in terms of what they, what they need to know in addition to the technology, in terms of being good at something. And maybe along the way, tell us if at any time you felt like just throwing the whole thing away and doing something else with your life. I want to start with section B of the question. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> Since day one. Actually, no, when I was doing it like, uh, like punk bands and just just getting really drunk and doing drugs and with my friends and rent was like a hundred bucks a month. I thought it was great. But then the LA thing, like Anika said, like after, first of all, you build up an ego because you're like, well, I'm the biggest fish in this small town. I'm amazing. Ah. And then you get to LA and they're like, be a janitor. And it, it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> but it is what it is. All right. And then you do, you do that shit, and then nobody ever guarantees you that you're not going to be a janitor at some point. So like after a few months of this shit, you're like, well, it's, maybe I'm waiting for the bus, but it's a weekend, and the buses are you know, done at 8 or something, and I should just go home. This is ridiculous. So it's, you know, it's, it's over. So, so yeah, I think that a lot. I used to think that a lot. And as a freelancer, whenever it gets even slightly dry or, or calm, you're like, yeah, well, I got to go to school. I got to be a psychologist or an accountant. It's like, it's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. <laughs> I have a little bit of money now. Nobody called in three days. Like uh, suicide or school? Yeah, fine. <laughs> so, 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 that's that's section B. If you have, um, if you're prone to nervous breakdowns, just choose a different profession. Like there's gonna be so many, and and like even even without that stuff, like what he said about being a studio. Um, how to be in a studio is not to lose your your shit. Just don't don't lose your, your temper. And it's it sounds easy. But I want to draw you a scenario that used to happen to me literally every night for eight months. Okay, Every night, eight months, we used to go to work at about 7 p.m. The artist shows up at around midnight. Uh, artist doesn't show up alone. He shows up with 45 people. They're all on all of the drugs and drinking lean and, dr and 
dripping stuff and sauce and like your shit's exploding and you're crying <laughs> and this happens every day and you're trying to mix an album while people are trying to shout louder than the speaker yeah. to hear each other without moving across the room so they're throwing stuff at you to make you turn down speakers while you're trying to mix a song that they're yelling behind you to do it's really hard to keep your cool really 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 hard especially if it happens day after day after day after day and you have to you, you have to read the session you have to read the people in there like some people if you say anything, it's all over. You lose the bridge. But some people, if you don't, you're a little bitch. <laughs> and then you lose the session because you're like, I don't want to work with this guy. He doesn't even stand for his, for his own stuff. And like, they're not going to take it as an excuse. Oh, why, do, why does my album sound bad? It's like, oh, because your, your boy kept yelling. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you know? So, um, yeah. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to go about it slightly differently. If, if, if you're going to be in a session and you, and you think you're a good engineer and you have to think about anything in Pro Tools at all while you work, you're not a good engineer. You're, you're not there yet. You're just not there yet. If like the technical parts of a, of a normal session you're supposed to be able to do every day still are a thing you have to think about or not automatic, you still have to work. And like, don't expect and don't fill your ego to the point of like, I'm a freaking super professional, I went to school, blah, blah, blah. Like the people you're competing against can do this in their sleep. I had a, a friend when I first started, he said like, I was like, whoa, you can engineer high. He's like, I was smoking a joint. And I was like, it's crazy, I get so slow. And he said, literally, if you can't do this blackout, you don't know how, how to do it. You're just not good enough. And then 95% of your concentration in a session should go to being cool. To being cool, to facilitate the artist, to, to make them feel comfortable, to actually pay attention to their takes and not the technical shit. Like, pay attention to how they're singing, pay attention to what they're playing. Um, an artist will rehire you if you freaking say, like, hey, I think the third note on your bass riff was slightly like late, you, you're down to do it again. They're never insulted when they screw up. They're insulted when you don't pay attention. And you can't pay attention if you have to pay attention to Pro Tools. You just can't. You just can't. And that's why a really... <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> and that's why a really good assistant is, is awesome. And also, that's why you can never trust any assistants. <laughs> because the really good ones are rare. But they're amazing. And if you are, like, turn into a really good assistant, you will turn into a really good engineer. And also, you will get the opportunity faster much faster. And what does a really good assistant do? He figures out what the microphones are supposed to sound like and not just that they work. He doesn't just check the lines, he makes sure the lines sound good. He asks the engineer what the hell he wants. Everybody works differently, don't just assume. Everybody hates, you know, an assumer. <laughs> um, so don't, don't do that. And, and, just, and, and that's just from the engineer's standpoint. And then once the session shows up, um, I have, I have stuff that artists always tell me that that's the reason they hate assistants. Artists, a lot of artists hate assistants, just so you know. So like, which means half the sessions you assist, you don't get to go in the room because the artists hate the assistant they met before and they're like, all assistants are terrible. So one thing they all say, assistant sits in the corner, stares at me the entire session waiting for me to say something, don't do that. <laughs> artist walks in with a shirt you like, don't be like, oh, I like your shirt. And then sit in the corner and stare at them for 12 hours. Like nobody enjoys that. And that's what your boss will tell you to do. Just don't do it. Uh, so, so that's a big one. Um, an artist is not always right. Don't be that person. But yes, you can do anything they ask. <laughs> so like, be, feel free to like, object and stuff if you think something is a terrible idea. But be aware that if you can't do literally anything they ask, then you're probably just not very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What else? <laughs> oh, so, to, to be a good assistant, what's good studio etiquette? Uh, oh yeah, never overstep the engineer ever, ever in front of a client. You can do whatever you want in, 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 in the room if it's just the two of you. Uh, engineers are friendly and they love assistants because uh, we all were assistants and you know, it's really fun. And a big part that I really like about this industry is that it, it feels like a competition in the beginning, like a really hardcore competition. But once you get into a studio and you get your own crew and stuff, it's, it's very... Everybody helps everybody a lot. And don't, when you're a runner, oh, that's important, yeah. When you're a runner, don't screw the other runners up, like over. Just don't do it. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be assistant first. He's going to be the CEO of Interscope. And you're going to be cleaning toilets. Just don't do it. <laughs> be courteous. Be cool. Be nice. It's true for the sessions. It's true for outside the sessions. And remember that everybody's a person and not just like a brand or whatever you want them to be. Your hero. It's just people. And treat them like who want to be treated like. Okay, I'm done. Howard, you have just heard something you normally don't hear in class, so I hope you understand how special... 
Okay. Uh, well, I think um, I think Daniel told <laughs> <laughs> pretty much told everything about it. But but yeah, I think everything it has to be. Uh, you could be very good with with my placement or with uh, you know about the studio, all that stuff. And it's very good actually because at the end of the day, you have to. It's it's important to say that you don't know it, so you can start knowing it about. And it's and it's good because sometimes you don't get the, the opportunity of of knowing all the mics or or knowing about the patch base. So it's it's good to just ask and and analyze the sub the thing so you can pretty much go forward. But at the end of the day, like 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 Daniel uh, saying, like it's it's just pretty much attitude in the studio because at the end of the day, you're working with people that are just being inspired by creativity. So if you're gonna be uh, like um, a th something that you're gonna be like obstructing that, it's not good. At the end of the day, you have to be something positive in the in the vibe, working or assisting or pretty much you have to be very good, good attitude, like. How are you? Like I was, I was always saying to to other people that it doesn't matter if you're 40, 50, 60, if you already have Latin Grammys or whatever. Uh, feel free to ask the person like, you want coffee? I'll get a coffee for you. Like if you need something, I'll go for that. It doesn't matter if you don't put your ego in front. If, it doesn't matter if you have like, uh, Grammys, whatever. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, in the studio, you're with the person, and your your work is with them. Like. I'm working with you so you can be more inspired, so you can have good vibes. Doesn't matter if you're doing a verse and it's like one hour, two hours in the verse. I know it's hard, and maybe you're tired, and but keep on doing it because at the end of the day, like Daniel um, told, um, people are grateful for that. And maybe you're gonna get to to uh, work with clients that are very shitty <laughs> in some in, in some terms. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be the only artist that you're going to work. You're going to work with a lot of people. And uh, every people, it's, on a, it's an open door. One people can open 10 doors for you or something. Like, so you have to be grateful for all of them. And I think for me, it was just pretty much attitude. And just being assistant, I think it's just, I, I, I think I learned that in, in Lars, is that I don't remember what teacher told me that, but uh, in the studio with like being an assistant, you have to try to try to be always two steps before the, the engineer and the artist. So you can pretty much like read their their minds. So if they want a coffee, they want something, if they, you need to go to the car for something for them, or uh, if they need a tissue or something, that's just try to be prepared. Uh, per, you don't have to be in the cell phone or that stuff. That just pretty much does, does that gets you pretty much nowhere in the industry. You have to be focused, you have to understand that and you're in the studio, you have to make a promise to yourself that you have to work. It doesn't matter, it could be one hour, it could be just 24 hours. Just make it happen because maybe that could make the whole difference in, the, in your career. You never know when you're gonna, ha you're gonna hit a Grammy. I didn't know that I was gonna hit three at the beginning when I was 26 and it was like, I didn't ask for that, but it just came. So I'm grateful for that, but that's a, a continuity of, of the good actions and the good attitude and by knowing your gear and all that stuff. Maybe you, know, you don't know everything, but it's sometimes it's not good to know everything. Sometimes you have to study more and all that stuff, but the attitude is the one that is gonna give you always a little bit front and more and more and more. So yeah, like, like Daniel said about all that stuff, it's, it's, it's pretty true actually. It's pretty true because um, at the end of the day, they're all people. It doesn't matter if they're if, if, if it's Bruce Springsteen or Rihanna or Carlos or Natalia. They're good people that just want to do music. Like they're they're not there to to make waste your time. At the end of the day, they're doing their job. So you have to support them in every way. So it's it's about working with other people. The, uh, go in the studio, or in the film, animation, everything. It's about work team. So you have to be positive in every in every aspect and always trying to support everybody. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit shitty or they're a little bit of, of boring or whatever. Try always to, to get them a little bit higher. It doesn't matter if they're an A&R or if there's a, an, a manager or they are the, the artist. Always try to, to make them better. Wow, well, you know, attitude is everything and what Oh, one other question, Andres. Is there any point in time where you felt like giving it all up? 
Oh, sorry. Um, Quitting? Uh, it, um, not so much about that, but um, sometimes it gets a little bit hard because sessions... It hasn't hit me until right now, actually, that I want to do more. And I want to change, I want to transcend, I want to make something more in uh, innovation. But I think that's normal and that's different for every, per for every person. But, and, that actu and actually, that it, it, it works different because the industry in LA and the music industry in, in Latin America, they're totally different worlds. Actually, here it's more competition, it's, it's a little bit, the progress, the, the, the curve to get up, it's longer, so much to come. It's more quicker, but you have to be more more prepared. So, yeah, it's. I think if I would stay here in LA, I think it would be have been very hard for me because because of the timings of the visa and all that stuff. Maybe for me in that moment, maybe I would say, okay, I'm gonna ch I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change and go to another career or something. But because I changed the way of thinking about, okay, it's not gonna work in LA. Let's try another market. It's it's it doesn't matter. Like LA is awesome, but maybe sometimes it's not going to work for you. So maybe you have to go to another, uh, to another part of the world and maybe it's going to change the whole perspective of your career. You know, and, and good attitude keeps those negative things away, yeah. doesn't it? So there you go. It's a trick question. <laughs> Two positives, one negative. Enrique, you have anything that you can add? Or? Oh, yeah, no, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, definitely. I uh, said I think it's a weekly thing of, like... Uh, I took the wrong turn. I want to quit. I can do this anymore. This is it. This is over. Like, that was fun. Yay. I'm going to tell my grandkids about this, but I can't. I just cannot anymore. And it's pretty cool because, like, we come here to share the good stories, the numbers, the certifications, the Grammys, and all that. But uh, I remember with Daniel, outside record plant and the sidewalk, having this conversation, telling him, like, I'm done. <laughs> this is it. I'm done. And he was like, hold, bro. Like, we are on the track. This is happening. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> this is not <laughs> happening. Like, the only thing that's happening is like, I'm probably going to have to close the studio tonight. In that room, it's like a mess. And I'm going to have to clean it. And I'm never going to become anything else than this. And yeah, you doubt yourself. And then keeps, uh, things keep moving. And then... Um, I got the Bieber session. I, I'm, I was a part of the whole Purpose album. That was like a year and eight months of work. And the day that I got the, the, the to assist my first like, interaction with them, um, it was really funny. At the end of the day, I came to the front desk and they were like, were you in a room? And I'm like, yeah, where else was I supposed to be? And they said that Bieber had kicked out five assistants prior that, uh, that I, I, I got the gig. So I didn't do anything special that day. I, no, nobody asked me about Pro Tools, if I knew microphones or frequency compressions and nothing. It was literally just like behave and be normal and let these people be comfortable to do their craft, to be themselves on a very like... Uh, uh, camera, right? Like, uh, I'm very shy in front of camera, and the microphone is just as frightening or worse than a camera. When you tell someone recording, like, that's the most, like, uh, vibe killing ever. Like, you kill the vibe, like, people get, like, ah, uh, the passport picture, like, ugh. So, I think, like, one of the most expensive things that we can carry, like, in this industry, it's, like, behave, like, let people be, and, like, know your place at that time like we all start i start this wanting to be the producer the the owner of the record label i want all to me like i i think i'm the best thing ever but in a session when you're there as an assistant like you just can't show this there's literally no space for ego or for you know so there's a lot of like being humble and being patient and being respectful to the people that have achieved what you want to achieve, like, and understand that this is kind of like, I don't know, I'm not too religious, but like an entity, like, you have to give 
there's a sacrifice. You have to donate something, respect hours and miserable hours and a lot of moments of doubts and all that stuff. But I really, I'm pretty sure that what stays with the artist or the client, or how you want to call it, is the human interaction that happened. You know, like you, ha like Daniel said, you have to have the technical skills out of the way. No one really cares about that. That's only going to be a concern if it's a problem. You should be able to run Pro Tools and microphones and all this stuff. What people are going to feel and remember at the end of the day, if that was a cool day, like if you are a decent person, if you are someone that they can relate and then can hang and all that stuff. So it's really hard. It's really like very uh, abstract, but it's like, I think the most important thing, like uh, this human interaction, like it's one of the most important things to anybody like a record. I'm mixing a friend's record for free now. And he knows that I'm super busy and all this stuff. And supposedly he said that he's not gonna be crazy about time with me and all this stuff. He is, he's on my guts. He wants the album and all. Cause that moment, music, it's very important. And we put passion there and it's a lot of energy and emotion. So the only thing that's really there, it's like this, like, how my dream was craft and shared and all that stuff. So get your technical skills together, but be cool. I think that's the advice. Awesome, awesome, great. Awesome. Nick, I know that your experience is a little different. Um, Canada's probably <laughs> slightly different world, and uh, yeah, it's a little you're more on the producing side than on yeah. the, the technical side, so let's hear your version of it. I think um, one thing that's really nice to hear up here is that everyone feels the same as me, <laughs> that we all want to quit oh, yeah. a lot of the time, and, and, and it's a really serious thing that, like, I, you know, I really do feel... <laughs> And and like, no, I'm just it's like real. it's real. Like and, and and anyone who feels it always thinks that they're the only one feeling it, yeah. and it's really bad because of social media. Whatever sure. you know, okay. everyone. Well, yeah. yeah, that's what I th I think. I look on social media. I look at producers that are, um, you know, who I think that are like kind of on the same level as me. And I'm like, oh, their lives are great. <laughs> they're on. They're in the coolest sessions all the time. They're always making hits. Every song that they produce is getting released. All of this stuff, and I get so down on myself because I can see the list of unreleased songs that are just rotting on my computer, <laughs> and just thinking to myself, "Oh my God, all of this time, what am I doing wrong?" You know what I mean? Like that's and, and if any, if you know, I know we've all been kind of repeating that same theme. Um, right now but if you're going to take away anything just take away that everyone is feeling that it's not just you so you know talk to someone about it i guess that's one thing i that's one thing i i never did i always like kind of held it in and i was like no no i can't let people know can't let people know can't let people know because of social media yeah. <laughs> um, but remember it's okay to quit for yeah it is okay to find something else if you if you truly aren't happy. Yeah. But you're wrong. You are happy. Stay in it. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I was always told the secret of success was not to quit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't quit. Yeah. Well, that's why we're all here. And if you're going to quit, at least quit every week. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> quit and then rehire yourself. <laughs> what was the first part of the question? Uh, about the things other than technology that you have to bring to the job. Oh yeah. Professional professionalism, you know, how do you find that? What I think I think again, like everyone's been saying, um, as long as you're a good person, no one wants to get back in the studio with a shitty person. You know? If you're if you walk into a room and 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 one guy has this huge ego and he's trying to boss you around, tell you, hey, do this, do this, I'm gonna say, you know, I'm not working with that guy again. Why would I ever why would I ever want to get back in the studio with that person? I want to be in the studio with, you know, people who respect me, people who I respect, and and people who want to have fun because that's what we all got into this to do was to have fun making music. It wasn't to be serious and, you know, have a have a battle of egos in the studio. And there's been countless sessions like that, and I've seen it happen. I've 
I've walked in and walked out of studio sessions like that. And you know, you walk in, you you see what's going on in, in that moment, and you're like, eh, this isn't for me. I don't want it. I don't want to be any part of this ego, whatever it is. Um, I'm gonna leave. So, like everyone's been saying, if you're just a good person and you're just nice to people, people are gonna want to work with you again. People are gonna want to talk to you again. You know, simple as that. It's a it's a very very simple answer. Be a good person. That's it. Excellent advice. Okay. Um, why don't we go to the, the audience here and see if we have any questions? Okay, this hand went up first, so I'm actually going to hand you my mic. Hi, guys. Hello. Um, I, my name is Ashna. I'm in the music production. Ashna. Yes. Uh, my question to you is if you could go back and give your your four year, two year ago self that was in that <laughs> building over there. Um, so, any advice, aka advice to us now, um, what would you tell yourself? Good Mark question. Let's, let's uh, start with Andreas. Yeah, can you re reframe it again? Like I didn't like get it. <laughs> if like, you could go back to when you were a student, to a student oh, here, yeah. what advice would you give yourself? Oh, perfect, great question. Um, uh, always move forward. That's that's the main key, and I still apply it nowadays. It's like never, never. It's good to to go to different paths and all that stuff, but always keep going forward because that's like it's like the it's like the gas or about yourself or I don't know how to say it, but it's it's uh, try to inspire yourself. At the end of the day, um, you're you're not you don't try to compete against the world. Always try to compete against yourself. Because that's the only way that you're gonna move forward and forward. So if something you don't like, okay, don't worry. Try to find different paths that you're gonna like. So don't focus only like in one thing. And if that doesn't work, don't worry. Just try to go to to different paths and always keep on moving. It doesn't matter if if you're changing or whatever, but always try to go a little bit higher and higher and higher. And it's gonna take you to very good places. Great, Enrique. Uh, I would say be aware of the relationships that you're making, especially because I think like uh, it's really cool to have a resume, like to print a resume, to have a website, to get a business card. But none of the jobs I have, it's because of that. Like the real meaningful relationships that you're going to create are very personal. So if you know where you want to go or if you know a studio that you want to work or kind of like a place that you want to be, try to move your, like he said, move forward, but move forward like towards the place that you already want to be. Even if that means being an intern or work for no money for a year like he did and I had to do and all that stuff. But the thing that will carry you or give you a gym, le, how do you say? Le gym, yeah. Legitimacy. Ah. Longevity, yeah, it's the the it's the relationships, the meaningful relationships, more than like meeting someone in a bar or in a club. It's like, hey, here's my business next car and all that. Uh, it works, but not as effective as being around the people that you want to be. So, like, if you want to be on post, you should like start making this connection and leave this group of people and embrace this community because most likely this will be the things that will put you where you want to be kind of thing. Put yourself there already kind of thing. Great. I like to think about that like um, like if I, if I was making an album, who would, you know, if you were making an album, who would you call first? You're not going to call the guy at the coffee shop that gave you his business card. You're going to call your friends, yeah. you know? Who do I know that I want to hang out with? And that go, goes back to our point before, you know? People want to hang out with good people. <laughs> I think um, my one piece of advice is if you ever think it's the end of the road, it's not. It's, it's really not. There's always a way to keep going every single time. And again, just have fun with it, simply. Just have fun. It's, I know it sounds very like cliche and short, and like a short answer or whatever, but it's true. Just try and have fun with what you're doing. And I feel like when I was in school here, I was trying to take everything so seriously and really trying to be a professional and I can't, you know, this is work. My work life and my life life are different and I need to be serious and this needs to be a job and it's not. 
you know, this isn't a job. <laughs> it's just yeah, but fun. don't tell the people out there it's not hard. I know. <laughs> I mean, it is hard. It's not it is. Hard. No, it is. A, it is hard. A trade secret. Yeah. <laughs> The way I dealt with those years, and I have actually nothing to say to old me, but I, 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 I'm serious. Out of my whole life, it's the few years that I, I feel like I nailed when I look back at them. I was like, yeah, I did everything exactly how I should have, but it was just a fluke. Uh, but the one thing I would say is that if I could choose somebody else to come back to the past and tell me advice was like what Anika just said, that would have been useful to me. So his advice is, is what I would wish I would get. But, yeah. but myself, I got nothing. <laughs> just, I just want to add something. Like at the end of the day, I, something that I, I don't I don't remember who told me in, in large program that I, I try to in the in your, in your class and your and your seminars and all that stuff. Like the people next to you, it could be the pe the person that is going to give you maybe a job later on. And like like for for Daniel and happened with 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 him in record plan, it could be. So sometimes it just have to be network. Like I didn't know these incredible guys. And uh, I just met them today, and maybe I can give them opportunities, maybe in six months or maybe in one month. So at the end of the day, you have to help people grow, and that would be something that I don't don't think about only yourself. Try to think about others because, at the end of the day, it's a community. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you, Andreas. You know, I was really impressed because uh, uh, Nick came in later today, but the, the three of the others, we all went to lunch today. Together, and I'm listening. Thanks for the invite, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, owe you, I owe you one. I owe you more than one. And, uh, uh, well, well, Enrique and, and Daniel have worked together a lot. Andreas has never met them at all. But I listened to them talk like they'd known each other forever. And it's because they shared such common experience, but also because they shared the passion, they shared the care, they shared so much that it seemed like I felt, I mean, I felt so honored to be there, you know, because I felt like we were all friends and family. They'd known each other sure. forever. And just really, I mean, some of these guys I know and some of them I've just met. So it's been pretty an amazing experience. So I want to <clears throat> add to that that that's also not surprising. I think it wasn't surprising for me. It wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't surprising for you. Or Nico, uh, yeah. Part of our job is to make friends with... Uh, full of strangers immediately. Yeah. Uh, it's literally the thing about this job. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing about this job. So like when engineers meet each other and they're like all actually working engineers and stuff, there's never awkwardness. It's really easy. Our job is not to be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun, yeah. So we got some good advice there too, again. Yeah. All right, we need another question. Actually, the, the, the guy in the black hat had his hand up first. So. Um, first thing I want to say is thanks for making the point of like you want to quit all the time because I feel like <laughs> it's really something nobody talks about and I, I like when you said like I felt you on that of like I don't want anybody to know but it is a constant thing so it's just nice to hear people who are successful like say that out yeah. loud but my question is because you guys are all like successful in your own right I'd be very interested to hear like what does your goals from here look like if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Because after hearing you guys talk, it's like, how much more can you do? Or like, so where much. do you want to go? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Does that make so sense? I don't know if that's, it yeah. sounded better in my head, but. No, no, that makes perfect I, sense. You know what I mean? I like it. It's pretty. Yeah. All right, let's start with, I'm making let's start with you. It was, uh, it's really funny, because, um, yeah, like we all talk about the glories and the cool stuff. But uh, the moment that I was nominated for the Grammys, I also became a producer on a Zane record. So at this very moment of my life, everything was just going amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that was so stressful, so insane. And then everything went well. I got the Grammys, the music got published, it's out. And then after that, that was that feeling, exactly what you said, like, I felt like I ran out of dreams. I was like, uh, so what do you do now? <laughs> this is like, you know, I can't, I wanted to do this and that and we're here. So what's next? And then 
I don't know. I think like to me it was really cool because milestones and um, points that they're definitely and socially it's remarkable it's awesome and all that stuff but i think what's left now it's like i think like it's way cooler we're free from the responsibility of making like i've made it like right there's some credits that shows that like at one point i was a decent professional in this industry hey. so now i think i can have fun so i think that's the coolest part of it like and try to remind myself every day why it's for this industry and go back to the music and it's way better to deal with frustrations now for me now at least like when things don't when things don't go right it's like cool they've already they were right at one point so it's not right now in a minute so i think that was really cool at least in personal experience to clear like this uh responsibility of like you know, like you said, my my dad, I think, only started considering that I had a career, like, when I started saying Bieber, and he could tell his friend his name is like, oh, okay, but to then was like, are you going to get a job, and all this stuff, and there's that pressure, and there's internal pressure, and all this stuff, so, I don't know, it's great, it's really cool, like, you, you achieve those things, they don't mean nothing, as far as, like, we don't get more jobs because we've done those things, it's easy, the next one, on a personal level, like, oh, I don't need to stress about this because we've done that and that and all those things, but they don't guarantee anything. So you still keep alive and with less responsibility, at least for me, like, it's fun now. It's way more fun now than it was before. I was way more scared of the, the concept, like, am I right? Is this right? Should I do it? Should I keep investing on this? And now I have this validation of, like, yeah, do it. Whatever. If it works, works. No one's here to, you know, judge anyone. I can't wait to get there. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's fine. Yeah. Um, if I don't quit next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think what I want to be next for me is, like I said, I once upon a time wanted to be the artist and just didn't have the, the patience to do social media and this and that and whatever. But I think the next step, uh, yes, I am a producer and songwriter first, but I, I want to have more of a hand in developing an artist from the ground up and really seeing someone from having absolutely no songs out and bringing them to their vision and giving them you know, their dream and helping be a part of that and seeing something like that grow, seeing multiple of those grow. and. That's what I really want to start focusing on now, is you know finding an artist, finding a couple artists, building them up, and hopefully getting a Grammy like some of these guys. <laughs> uh, first, I'm going to say something about the the wanting to quit all the time stuff, because uh, because uh, everybody. This is the main theme of tonight. <laughs> so uh, 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 Dave Pensado once said, not that long ago. And he's Dave Pensado. He's got, he's, got a, he's got a TV show, got like 15 freaking Grammys. He's worked on everything you've ever heard. Just like, oh, who would you work with? Everybody in the Western world. Like, ridiculous shit. And he said if the phone doesn't ring for four days, he's like, he pulled the rope. He's like, it's over. It's done. And he's like, you know, 70, which means he pulled out the rope like, what, 20 times a year since he was 19? It's insane, you know? But the, the pressure stays real, for me at least. I, I don't know. Uh, it, it stays real. Once, once it stops ringing, you're like, it's over. My 15 minutes of fame are done. Um, yeah, so that's one thing. And uh, part two is uh, pretty much what he said, actually. I, I recently started working with um, Atlantic to, to do exactly that. So I'm an artist development consultant with Atlantic, which is like when you do that, you find um, a kid who's talented and you develop the whole thing. You like build. Uh, with me, I like produce the, the songs with them and, and help write the songs. And so choose outfits and freaking uh, choose the director for the videos, like the whole thing, which is cool. And generally just getting, uh, for me, okay, being an assistant gives you zero power. You just do. And then when you start engineering, you feel like a screwdriver or something, that people use you to turn a screw. And you're like, this is the least creative experience of my life. And then you want to kill yourself. And then 
after a while, you, you make a decision in your head and you go, maybe people like my opinions and like my taste, not just the fact that I can Pro Tools. <laughs> uh, and then you start giving your opinion and then people who like your opinions will hire you again. People who don't will not. And then after a while, you'll find your people. Um, forgot the point of that. That's it. Well, I think like, uh, like for you, what is success? At the end of the day, for all of us, success, it could be very different. Like, uh, we all grow up in the industry always like uh, n like in social media knowing uh, like the, the, the famous people and they have Grammys and they have, um, I don't know, like Emmys or all that stuff. And it's obviously it's very passionate that you want to get that and you're going to get it. Don't worry about it. Maybe you don't know when, but you're going to get it. But at the end of the day, I would say like uh, like success for me it would be like what what is something that it's a balance. So if you're balanced with your life, what what you want to do, like at the end of the day, if if you don't get a Grammy or an award or something, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, what what makes you happy, what makes you uh, sleep tight every day, you're, that you're very like focused in peace, that's pretty much success. At the end of the day, you have to keep on going, be better always, and but at the end of the day, it, it takes you to to another place. So, so yeah, like about being successful, but for yourself at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, an award, yeah, it gives you it gives you a little bit of more power of. I remember the end of my point. Sorry. Is that the more influence I have on the project, the happier I am. So, uh, for f first of all, for me, success is exactly what he said. It's, it's, and for me, that manifests in the moment where you don't want to kill yourself when you don't get the phone call. It's like when, when you balance everything, which I haven't never been able to do. But I feel like one day, I feel I'll feel balanced. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but aside from that, the, the the pursuit of what to do next is the pursuit of essentially control for me. I just want more control over the final product and like more of my creative input to be. In there always. You know, uh, it's a, <clears throat> I want to tell you just a little story that kind of illustrates what you're saying. Uh, one of our inductees on Friday is uh, a, a guy by the name of Brandon Trust, who's a cinematographer. And he's quite successful. He's been the director of photography on many TV shows. He worked on Barry. He's currently working on uh, The Righteous uh, Gemstones. He has, uh, he's won uh, the best cinematographer at Sundance. He does all the Seth Rogen movies, okay? And I ask him that same question. I ask him, when did you feel like you really had made it? And he said, when we were sitting in a meeting and one of the, the directors and the producers looked at me and said, what do you think about this? <laughs> and he said, that's when I felt that I was there. So it works everywhere. Totally. So thank you thank for that. You. All right, so here you go. You're next. Um, hi, my name is Sheba. Thank you guys so much. I have nice so many questions. Sure. I literally could ask like five, but I'll just ask one. So my, um, my question is, uh, I'm a music production student, and so if you could speak about but if you could talk about what, um, like how a music producer, what the etiquette is, what the relationship is, from between engineer and music producer, when you're in these big studios, especially where you start off as like a runner and an assistant, um, we talked a little bit about the etiquette with artists, right? But like, what's the etiquette with producers and vice versa? Like, what can a producer do to make the session great? Also, like to make, you know, like to be like, you know. Not Good question. You wanna? You wanna? No. I would. I would like the answer. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, okay, um, it's easier to say what not to do. Uh, if if is if they walk in the room and they say a bunch of stuff that's just loud and wrong, uh, which is very for people with like uh, ego issues will show up in a room and try to like, you know peacock up and 
usually the words that come out of their mouth are so stupid that I will never ever respect them. Like it's over forever. Like I, I, I cannot forgive. It's done. And usually the same people will like uh, belittle the engineer all the time and also like talk down to a lot. Like it's, it's essentially what he said. It's those guys. The producers he hates, engineers hate them too. And the same goes for producing. <laughs> like be cool and understand that the engineer, uh, like the engineer is trying to facilitate your crazy ideas. Okay, and you, <laughs> and the artist yeah. is trying to facilitate your crazy idea. So the producer is like, the guy that if he has an ego, it's all going to help. <laughs> Just gone. Yeah. yeah. What was the second part of the question? No. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The at the end of the day, I think like you're you're going to a studio to 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 do a work team at the end of the day. So you don't have to like. You're not going to a place just to, to give orders, and that's it. Like, just just ask the engineer, like, what is your input about this? Sometimes maybe that person is going to change the whole perspective of your of the of your head, of the single or whatever, and that makes the difference. At the end of the day, you have to work in teams. So if the, so, if the producer has a big ego or something like that, the engineer is going to notice it at the end. So he's going to say, okay, do what you want, but at the end of the day, I can do better things for you. But if you don't want them, it's your choice. I think that trust and respect is really important coming from both directions. Yeah, it's a balance. Yeah. I mean, because in, in a creative collaboration, there has to be, uh, you have to share the vision, and you have to share the passion. And even if it's somebody else's vision, yeah. you need to buy into it, and you need to respect it, and you need to work towards it, and that's really what makes a professional. We just don't do the things we love we learn to love the things that we do sometimes. But uh, to add to that, like there's definitely two different worlds. Like when we grow as an engineer, like the journey of it definitely more shy. It's definitely more like technical and respectful and you're like more contained uh, than if, if you are a producer, like as a producer you can be crazy and like jump on the credenza and you know do like be very loud yeah and if that's the mood set up that mood but um i think uh the producers it's something that's been changed a lot with these things of like beat makers slash producers but as far as i know and understand from the documents from record plant the producer is the client it's the most important person in the room more than the artist and if you're an engineer, you actually, if you have a good producer, you're there to serve him. Like, he's the one that will say another take or save this take or mark this take or something like that. So you are working pretty much for that guy. And on a big studio, he's supposedly the one who booked that room. He picked the room because it has the vibe and all the stuff. So when you are a producer, you have way more freedom to be yourself, to be creative, to be funny to be crazy and all that stuff but if all that it's still contained on something that is serving the session and that's enabling the artists to give their best you're killing it but i think a lot of the things that people are talking here do not do this i think it's like don't be anxious like when we are anxious we fuck it up like pretty much like uh you know like the time will come like the things you need to, you know, develop your craft and your relationships and all this stuff. So I think most of the time that I see people doing things that we don't like or we just mentioned that don't do it, it's because they're insecure. They are, you know, they they don't know how to, to behave. And we'll, what, like he said, I think the most expensive, the coolest thing is to have fun. If you can pass that to people, and get the job done, that's the thing. It's definitely not often that I'm in, the, in a session with an engineer. It's usually you know me at my home studio and the artist and maybe a couple of writers, maybe another producer. But um, the situations when I have been in the studio with an engineer, whether I'm doing a camp or something like that, for me, I'm not. I, I walk into one of those studios and I just ask, okay, where's the auxiliary so I can yeah. plug in my laptop? <laughs> and that's the truth because I, I don't know how to use everything in the room. I don't know how to use anything in the room, you know? And I'm trust into the engineer and saying, okay, you know, you're going to work with me on this. You know 
which mic is best for this person's voice. You know which compressor is going to work better with their voice and with the mic together. And this and that. I don't know this stuff. You know, I'm here to 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 write the lyrics with the artist and produce the song and and this and that and and, and you know, kind of giving the reins to the engineer. So I'm and sure engineers love him. So just I, follow no, his advice. That's that's really nice. I, I think I just I just like I said, just try and be respectful. Everyone's there to do a job. You know, he can clearly, you know, the engineer can clearly do his job better than I can do his job because he's working there, you know? <laughs> if I could do it better, I'd be working there, you know? So, like, I don't know. Everyone's got their job. You know, I've seen a lot of our grads get in, like, to jobs that are, quote, over their heads. You know, they begin to go underwater. And the ones that can pull it off are the people that stop trying to control the situation and let people do their jobs. I find that's true in a lot of, uh, it's certainly true in the television and film business as well. People are there for a reason, yeah. you know? And they're probably very good at what they do, yeah. so don't be telling them what to do. Exactly. Because it know, makes you look like an insecure bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's what, that's what good leadership is. That's the beautiful, I think to me that's the beauty of, of creative collaboration, you know? When I see people that are, in that sync, you know, that everyone's in a zone together and everyone's listening to that note and that beat and they're going, yeah, that's it. You know, I, I feel like that's magical. It is magical. I mean, it's spiritual. It's yeah. religious. It and, uh, you know, I wish our government could work as well as sometimes. <laughs> as, you know, but we won't go there at all. Let's get another question. Okay, actually, this comes right on time. And... It's probably geared more towards Nick than the rest of you guys. No offense, because you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a songwriter and like producer. I'm a musician. I don't really fit the card of an engineer all the way, even though I have the technical knowledge, I have the training. But I'm looking to do something more geared towards like playing instruments and writing lyrics type of. So, what do you have for us songwriters and people who want to be producers? Um, sorry if my answers are all simple, but I think it's just like, yeah, I think it's just um, keep writing. You know, uh, it, it's a muscle. If you think about it, I mean, you gotta you gotta work it out. You gotta work it out to get better. You gotta work it out to get stronger. Write with new people. You know, find events around wherever you are, whether it's L.A. or Nashville or wherever it is that you're from. Find um, Every single time which is incredibly fun you know you never know what you're gonna get out of it um yeah just keep doing it just like keep tr keep trying try new things every day you know search up new techniques online watch interviews with um producers or songwriters or session musicians that you really respect you know uh pull up your 10 favorite songs find the writers to those songs and dm them on instagram if one of them replies that's incredible. That's awesome. Hey, you want to get in the studio sometime? If they're like, hey, I'm super busy, but maybe send me some stuff. And then you can send them 10 of your favorite songs that you've ever written. And if they like one of them, you're in. You know, you're in with that person. You can get in the studio with them. It's just like, it's tedious and it's, it's you know, kind of annoying to do sometimes, but you really have to do it. And I know because I hate doing that stuff, but you know you have to do it. It's it's the only way that you're gonna kind of level up and get to that you know, where you want to be. I feel that Enrique actually answered this question a while back when he was talking about relationships. You know, you need to surround yourself with people that compliment you, and people that are serious, and people that share your passion, and grow together. Yeah. I mean. It's
Oh, for sure. Like you said, like you want to learn an instrument or you keep yeah. digging and doing it. It's great. You have to be comfortable with your craft, for sure. But one thing that I've learned in L.A. especially, it's like there's music that we make and we love, and it's art sometimes, and there's the music industry. Like, divide your attention and your effort on selling this or, in, you know, paving it to be, sell that one, to be sold at one point. And you, you, it's really hard. I know how, you know, percentage-wise, but, like, it would be a waste of time that if you were a genius on your bedroom and nobody knows that. So you got to put a huge effort on putting that out. So I think you have to find the balance between improving yourself as a songwriter and producer and then making the right connections and finding the right spots and, you know, finding the way of transforming that into a, a product a kind of thing, not yeah. just art. Yeah, try to think about it like a, try something, bring something new to the table always. Try to be better yourself in your craft base or something and composing and all that stuff. It's going to keep you better because you're going to start knowing other people that maybe don't know it. And if you know it, they're going to say, hey, you know it. Come, he come here. Try to work with me. And then that starts opening doors. So at the end of the day, just, just try to be better with your craft and always, always network. I think um, adding on to that, I think, um, you know, if you do try and bring something new every time to the table, it's not always going to be good, though, you know, and that's okay. Because then you can figure it out what you can't do, what you can call other people to do. You know that and that just that 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 creates the best collaborations when you know what your strengths are and you know what your shortcomings are. You know who you can get into the and who you need to bring into the room, and that's like uh, what I think the tr the traditional sense of a producer is: yeah. is they get the right people in the room together. And if you can learn to do that, and and bring the people into into your circle that are going to compliment you and you're going to compliment them, you're going to have hits on hits on hits on hits on hits and have lots of fun. Yeah. I think, I th one. right? Yeah. 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 Guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, something that I, last week that I was talking to a Venezuelan producer and songwriter, he told me something very wise that at the end of the day, for songwriters like you, um, every song, it's a, it's a new start. So if one song doesn't work, a new song, it's always going to be a new start. So try to see it that perspective because like I was, years ago I was talking to the producers of, of the, uh, one of the famous songs of, in the Latin industry that was Despacito. And they, they got, at the end, they, they had to write like almost 300 or 500 songs to get to Despacito. And it's sometimes that you don't ever going to know that, but... You have to always vision yourself that every song is going to be, maybe it's going to hit. If not, every song is always going to be a new start. Do we have time for another question? How are we doing time-wise? Yeah, it's nine. Hmm? It's nine. It's nine? Okay, we well, get, we let's, do, let's do one more question, and then we'll do a wrap-up. She has four more questions. <laughs> 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 oh, actually, we have. Is your hand up? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, here you go. Oh, wait. Yeah. My question is really quick. I'm an artist and a songwriter, and I came with him. He's a graduate from the school. I was just seeing if you guys are open to like people pitching you songs and stuff. One hundred and fifty percent. Okay, cool. Sweet. Yeah. Just checking. Just like <laughs> trying to see, because in yeah. case we don't get to talk to all of you guys afterwards, like who's like a thumbs up? You're a thumbs up. No. Yeah. Cool. Thumbs up. And time. Sweet. Awesome. That was it. Okay. I don't know. If maybe. He's uh, it was going all the way over there. I think. Okay. Cool. How you doing? My name is uh, Mario. Hi, um, Mario. Mario. Well, question was, um, what's your relationship with the uh, former students? Like, do you collab with them, or do you find some of them not serious, or just do you guys have like uh, relationship with your <laughs> former students? <laughs> uh, classmates. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying like 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 student like? I don't know. Do they or do they want to? Is that the question? Which one is it? Oh. Hmm? No. Have you? It was, to me, it was not something that it, it, it was like mandatory or happened. So like from my class, the class I graduate, I don't have much contact with my classmates 
And but then that you find people that were from here, and then the bond gets like you know he straightened up. I met Daniel at Record Plant, who's now run and our, the president of the studio. It's another LA Recording School alumni, Jeff Barnes. Jeff yeah. Barnes, yeah. yeah. And then there's so many other like people at Record Plant or that has passed through Record Plant that are from here. And then when you said that, it becomes like you can connect and talk. Happening, but it's really cool to meet them along the road. That is really cool. And of course, I'm the director of alumni relations, and my job for, well, even when I had other jobs, was to do my best to try to connect all the alums possible because, uh, you know, I've got a chance to see people who come into this institution with dreams and oftentimes with a lot of skeptics around them, you know, the real job people, the, the uh, are you sure that you're not the kind of person that should do this? This is for other kinds of people. You should get a real job, you know? And I've had a chance to see a certain passion and a certain fire, which is not necessarily what I come to see as the most talented person, but the person that's most driven by, by passion and willing to work hard because when you're doing the thing you love, it's hard, but that doesn't mean it's not fun. And you have to learn to get by the things that are going to dissuade you to quit. That's why I asked that question. Because I have found a lot of people want to quit when it seems like things are not going their way. But if they can just get over that little hump and not say, I'm going back home to work in the family business, then something will happen. Some of you have heard me say this before, that I don't believe in luck. I do not believe in luck whatsoever. There's no luck out there. What exists instead of luck? Uh, well, luck exists when preparation meets opportunity. So you always have to keep in the game. Always be creating. Always be building relationships. Always network. Do all those things. And when you're starving and you think this is the stupidest idea you ever had, keep that gratitude going. Keep that, you know, that attitude going, okay? I'm just repeating what's been said here tonight. Uh, and don't quit. And you will, you will, you will have a life. Not, you may not become rich and famous, but you will have a life that will be a happy life. And you'll be able to look back and say, you know, it was crazy, but it sure is a, it's been a lot of fun, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, let's, uh, you know, on the line, let's start, with, let's start with Daniel, and maybe just give us a, kind of a final eulogy, eulogy here in terms of uh, anything you want to say. <laughs> anything you want to say. Uh, first on Last words. I, I was pretty much a, a, a negative Nancy or a Debbie Downer earlier, uh, but uh, I, I, I want to add that I also feel... Like you just said, that um, um, it is super fun. Like this job is super fun. Like you do want to kill yourself like much more often than in other jobs, but it's like more bipolar, I guess, because uh, the the good stuff is 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 priceless. Like some I have some memories that are some are music, some are people that uh, you know they'll rival anything. Like they're freaking. I, I got some <laughs> good stuff in here, you know, and it's uh, that's worth it to me. And like. And my, my wife always says, like, yo, you, whenever I get back from, like, a session, I'm just, like, giggly for a day. Like, I always have a good time. Even if it's a terrible session and everything collapsed, I find something that I just yeah. really liked. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think it's really, really fun. It's just really scary and a very difficult thing to get into. Um, but um, I, I wouldn't, I think, change anything in the past. I, like, I think it was, it was cool. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Andres? Well, I would say um, just just be passionate about it. Like at the end of the day, we all have the same 24 hours every day. Just just make it happen like as you want it. Uh, obviously, you're going to be, be afraid about a lot of stuff. But always, uh, like for me, it works a lot always trying to be positive about what you do. Maybe you're not going to do, you're not going to know about everything. But always try to find new ways of, of improving yourself and just going forward and forward and new, new, uh, knowing new people because they can change your, your, your life forever. 
and just enjoy, enjoy the, the moment because at the end of the day, the session's over and it's maybe, it's the, maybe that artist is never gonna come back and it's normal. Sometimes it happens, and it's, and it's, but at the end of the day, you put a price, something, something value to that product, to that single, to that hit, or to that uh, album. And at the end of the day, you can, you can take your phone, you can hear it and say, I did it, like, um, I'm part for the next thing. I think, uh, <laughs> I think we've really had a pretty common theme here. I think last thing I want to say is, I lost my point. <laughs> Darn, I had it. I had it so you're good. I had it in my head. Damn. Now you're too young for that. I have an excuse yeah. about this gray hair. <laughs> um, I th school, whether you're here, whether it's online, um, if you ever do feel like quitting, you asked for this. This is your dream. So don't quit on your dream. You know, I feel like Amen. I keep repeating myself. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. Really try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we get to bring the house down here. Oh boy. Sure, <laughs> quit. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think yeah, we are motivated by passion. I think we are. be happy doing this every day like I think there's way more opportunities there that will grant you money straight up like if that's what you're looking for and stability and like vacation and you know health insurance all that stuff <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know where you're gonna be next weekend but uh, yeah we keep celebrating a bunch of things we have Instagrams that uh, highlight with a bunch of things, but yeah, like you said, there's hundreds of songs running on your laptop. I've done many sessions. I've worked and wrote songs there, most likely, and not gonna go anywhere. And it's really fun to be here sharing all this. But there's a lot of effort. There's a lot of moments, outs and instability and panic and all that stuff. But it's just like he said, like we choose this. Like it's you have to be honest and go back to that moment where you like the normal nine to five job didn't seem to be what we want to do and we decide to do this. And it's not easy. It's not uh it is joyful, it's amazing, but it's really hard. It it consumes you in a crazy way. But uh it's it's an yeah, like even though we share and we make it super glamorous, like a bunch of things that the work of like doubts and mistakes and wrong choices. I said no to Old Town Road this year. I was supposed to <laughs> vocal produce that session, yeah. And I was busy with another session that that song's not gonna go anywhere. You guys are never gonna hear it. But I said no to that song. And yeah, no, it's, so it's like, there are a few of those events in life that it's gonna make you like, it's I just miss two happiness. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen again. And if it doesn't need to be as high as a number or anything like that, like Andreas said, what it's what success means to you. And I'm really happy getting paid to make music and have an opinion and have a voice and have fun. This is insane. This is really, really, really cool. So it's hard, but we, it was our choice, and it's going to happen. Trust you guys. Don't give up. Uh, let's give them all a hand. So we have, you know, I, I want to kind of conclude this with just a little bit of my feelings about the school and about what we've done here tonight. 20 years ago, Back in September of 1999, these seats weren't even installed yet. In fact, this was a flat floor. And uh, we had 14 students. And uh, we couldn't have done this. 
We couldn't have done this because we didn't have four people with this experience, uh, with already having the school experience. And you all see that they're all kind of the same. They're all kind of preaching the same thing, even though they come from three different continents. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? What, in the last 20 years, of people like these young men, I can say that because I'm the oldest one sitting here, <laughs> and you people too, you know, you all have the same opportunities because you all have the same love and you all have the same pattern. And I'm talking to you people out there on the online world too. You've made a really bold step in terms of wanting to do something that may not seem to a lot of people like the smartest thing you've ever done. But if you do it, you'll go back and your dad will say, yep, I'm proud of you, good job, even though he'll still come and see your house and try to determine whether or not you really earned it properly or not. Uh, but uh, once again, I just want to stress the point that we've had a very wonderful experience tonight. I can tell, because I'm good at reading crowds, that you've all enjoyed what these men have had to say. And I think you've all benefited from it too. And that's part of what is happening in this school right now. We've got 10,000 graduates that are doing all kinds of different things, interacting, coming back to the school, giving back to the school. And it's powerful, and it's profound, and it's moving. And I'm so happy to be here. I am so happy and proud of all of you. So happy you're all here. It's been an amazing night. Thank you all for coming. Come back tomorrow. We've got more happening. We've got something happening every day. Spread the word. I also want to pitch Wednesday night. We, uh, we originally planned to show the new uh, um, Last Blood, the Rambo movie, because it was produced by one of our grads, okay? But Lionsgate won't permit us to show it until it's been released in the regular theaters. I think they're afraid it's going to bomb so that they just, they don't want the word getting out before it gets so totally released. But uh, this, this the, the man who produced it has produced another movie called Angel. And he's an Israeli too, by the way. His name's Ariel Vroman. And we're going to be showing that movie here. And it's a movie that has real pertinence in terms of today's culture and conflict. It, it's about an Egyptian who saves Israel, okay, and other things. And uh, we really want, would love for you to come. Also, we're going to be showing the short film that he made as a student 19 years ago, which starred a then unknown actor just on from England named Gerard Butler, his first acting job. And in it, he makes love to a camel, a live camel. You've got to see this movie to Wait, believe it. So please come back, 7 o'clock. I'm Wednesday changing my flight. <laughs> So Once again. Please come back here to watch a grown man have sex with a camel. <laughs> if I understood correctly. It kills him, too. Oh. <laughs> Spoiler alert. All that in a short film. All right. Absolutely. It's all about storytelling. <laughs> Once again, thank you all for coming. Thank you all thank so, you. Much, so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. And uh, we'll be around for a little bit so you can come up and ask some, some other questions. Good night out there in online land. Thanks, guys.